All right, so I'm working on my bag C10 here, and uh, I had, I've had a lot of people ask me kind of how air ride works, so I thought I'd show you guys a basic video uh, from underneath my truck here. Basically, uh, this is a parallel three link. Uh, my truck is, so it's got these two long bars that come up and attach to the frame right in here. Uh, those are actually the original uh, leaf spring mounts. They go back. All those back, there's the bag. And the bag mount, there's a shock. And there's the mounts on the rear end. Uh, basically, this kind of just works like a leaf spring almost. Um, except you have the bag, which actually controls your height. Uh, so you can lower or deflate it, inflate it. Uh, right now, I have it partially inflated. And it's mounted up on top on the frame. Uh, basically, when you inflate a bag, all it does is make this bag expand, which in turn lifts the frame away from the rear end. So if you see, there's a gap between the rear end and the frame right now. But if I were to inflate the bags, it would actually go up in the channel there, or up in the C, um, C notch, and sink up in there. Uh, that's how you get. That's how it works as far as getting it low. Um, and this, these three links actually keep it, uh, keep the rear end in place. So the rule is. Um, you can have a three link or a four link, but the basic rule is you want to have uh, links on the top side of the rear end and the bottom side. Uh, what I mean by that is see how these mounts are on the bottom of the rear end. And then if you look close up in here, there's actually a mount on the top of the rear end there also with this pipe. Um, that keeps the rear end from what they call rolling. Uh, so it won't like spin on you. Um, that's one of the basics. Uh, you can ha either have like a triangulated three link or a four link or a parallel three link. Um, there's a bunch of different setups. It kind of depends what you want to do. Or you can actually do a bag over um, bag over axle, which the bag just goes in between, kind of basically in between the C notch and uh, the axle here. And then um, most bag setups and you have a pan hard bar, which is right here. Um, the pan hard bar actually goes. from the back of the rear end one side all the way over to the other side of the frame. And uh, what that does is it keeps the rear end centered uh, so the rear end can't go left or right. Uh, that's really important because you, you don't want your rear end kicking out to the side obviously. Um, so that's really one of the basics that you also need uh, pretty much with any, any setup. Uh, but again, it depends kind of what you're doing. Um, air ride is it's really not that complicated uh, once you understand the basics, but you can't half-ass anything. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, you have to make stuff out of thick steel. See that plate up there uh, where my top link mounts is actually mounted to um, the rear end cover, uh, but it's really thick steel and it's mounted in there really good. Um, here's my air tank. I just got an 8 gallon. And then here's my compressor, so it's kind of a mess down here. I wasn't really worried about underneath. Uh, it's a rat rod, so it doesn't really matter. I'm actually working on something right now. Um, you can't really see up here that well, but this is the top link. It goes all the way back to your end. It's the top link, and there's the bracket that it goes into. Um, obviously, I'm missing the bushing and the bolt right now. Uh, the bushing actually went out on me, so I am replacing the bushing. I'm getting one of my friends to machine one up. Uh, it's a kind of it's a weird setup. Uh, this isn't the typical setup. Usually, uh, most setups just have these. Uh, kind of standard literal um, end links uh, but this is an older setup and it has a little bit different setup up here as far as mounting um, but yeah I'm getting that machined out um, and like I said you gotta make sure everything's strong see there's nice tin beads there um, it's welded on there nice really thick plate uh, it's a 3 8 plate and then this actually controls um, set back and forth movement also just like the other the other two bars on bottom um, keeps the rear end from rolling so these take a lot of pressure a lot of force another basic here um, these are the valves basically the valves are what directs your air um, so I have the furthest left of the valve that's that I'm showing you right there uh, that's actually an open valve or a release valve um, so basically when I hit my switch to release the air, the air comes out the back of that valve, out the exhaust, and then the bags deflate. This valve right here is the fill valve. Um, so my center in here, I have actually have an air line that comes into the main manifold of this valve setup, and then it goes out to this manifold here, and as soon as I hit the switch, it goes through 
the hose that's up there into my bag. So then if I wanna if I wanna air up, I just hit that switch and this solenoid automatically goes. If I wanna deflate or air down, then I just hit that exhaust valve and it lets the air out. Um, they sell mufflers that go on the end um, of the valves to either to slow them down and to quiet them down. Uh, mine are just open. I just I don't I don't really care. Uh, I like the fast the fast movement. Uh, these are half inch SMT valves. Uh, the bigger the valves, the faster the movement, the faster the fill. Um, and then I have my gauge pressure elbows there. Um, same thing for the back here. That's kind of a mess. I just have a lot of shit going on in here. Same basic setup. Uh, I got the same setup on the other side. Um, so that's pretty basic, uh, but that's something a lot of people don't understand is the valves. So those are good things to read up on. And SMC is uh, probably the best brand and the most known uh, valve setups. And like I said, half inch, three eighths, and then quarter. Uh, I think they might sell eighths too, but I mean, it all depends how fast the valves you want. Okay, so up here I have independent front suspension. Uh, this is a 94 Silverado chassis. So I have uh, my shock mount, which has been custom fabbed into there. I have upper tubular control arms, move ball joints. Um, basically for this, uh, the bag just replaces, kind of replaces the spring. Um, it's pretty easy to understand. Uh, inflate lowers the control arm, which lifts the truck. Uh, deflate obviously brings the control arm up. Um, see, I had to notch out my control arm, notch out my frame uh, for the control arms to clear so it lays. I had to do some work up there uh, to get the actual bag to mount in, to bolt in. And then there's the airline also ran in there. You can't really see it, but it's ran through the frame. And there's obviously the plates um, that are just drilled through uh, the control arms and then bolted on. Also, another important thing is with this is your steering. Um, since this is obviously independent, the steering actually moves a lot. Uh, so you want to make sure you have good steering joints. Uh, you want to make sure they're nice and tight all the time. That's one thing that a lot of mini truckers uh, do is check their, check their tie rods a lot. Uh, because they move so much and they're not really made to do that. So that's important. You don't want your tie rod breaking and losing control or not having steering. Here's another basic. Uh, this is just an AVS 7 rocker. Um, basically, this is this button right here. You press up, then it fills, down, release, up. It fills. This is the all four bags. Um, this is the center bag, or the um, front bag, front bags. This is the left front, right front. Uh, both rear, left rear, right rear. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You get used to playing with these a lot, and uh, my system is really fast, so it's, it was kind of a <clears throat> kind of difficult to get used to it at first. So I'm like just sitting there, barely even barely even tapping it, just so I don't like fucking bottom out and <laughs> scare the shit out of whoever's riding with me. Um, there's basically there's my tank gauge. Uh, that's really important, so you can know if your pressure switch is working correctly on your compressor. Um, the pressure switch tells the compressors when to turn on, so um, my my pressure switch is turned off right now. But uh, I have my pressure switch set to turn on at 145 and set off or shut off at 180. So right now it should be on, but my truck's not on, so it's not on. Um, so yeah, that those are important to have because you want to make sure your pressure switch is actually working. Otherwise, you could have a bad pressure switch and your compressor just keep going and keep going and never quit. Um, these are dual needle gauges. Turn on the light here. These are dual needle gauges. Um, these are the front bags. These are the rear bags. Basically, these I just say are all red is right and then black is left. Uh, that's just how I remember it. These are kind of nice because they're cheap. Um, they don't take up much dash space. Uh, these are airlift gauges. Those work nice. Uh, you kind of want to know what you're sitting at as far as ride height. That tells you when you're driving exactly how high you off the ground, uh, how high off the ground you are, or whatever. Um, so me, I usually run at about 9,500 pounds when I'm driving, but I I'd run as low as 20 pounds. Um, it kind of just depends where I want to go and what I'm trying to do. Um, if I'm laid all the way out, then it's zero. Um, pretty self-explanatory with that also. Alright, so uh, down when I was underneath the truck, I was talking about end links, and these are what are called end links. Um, basically, these bushings aren't pushed on all the way, but these are nylon bushings that go inside the steel tube, and then this threads into your pipe, uh, into your link, and then this tightens it up against that like a jam nut. Um, basically with these, all you need to do 
is you kind of weld these onto your frame. Uh, however, however you need it, most of them are like this. Um, so the frame is right here. But you just weld them onto your frame, um, bolt this up, and this allows uh, the link to actually pivot. So the thing with airbags is the frame, the frame moves. Um, so this needs a pivot because the bar actually moves or rotates. Um, so these are really important. Uh, these are pretty much one of the basic things that every airbag system has. Uh, they're fairly cheap. Uh, these on eBay are about 40 bucks. Um, TIG welded, jam nut uh, with the bushing and the sleeve. Pretty nice. Uh, so if you're going to start with anything, start with these. Uh, you're going to want to decide if you're going to want to do a parallel 3 link or what kind of setup you're going to want to do. Uh, but that kind of depends on what your preferences are. Also, you have to decide if you want uh, bag over axle, which I talked about a few minutes ago, or if you want bag on bar. Uh, bag on bar is when it, the bar, the bag is actually on the link. Um, the bag on bar gives you more lift because it's on. It's like a lever; it can lift uh, X or more. If the bag's back here and it lifts the lever a little bit like that, the lever is going to be this way further, so it actually gives you more lift. But bag on. Uh, bag over axle gives you more lifting power uh, because this is again this is a lever if you're on a bag on bar this is a lever so it's easier for you to push down uh, on the actual on the lever itself you have more leverage um, so if you want to if you want to tow stuff um, you're gonna want to do a bag over axle because it'll give you more uh, actual power versus the bag on the bar uh, which will give you more lift uh, which is nice um, but it all really depends what you're trying to do with your truck. So as I showed you guys earlier, uh, I have my compressors underneath the bed back there. I have Viair electric compressors, just a dual uh, 44C setup is the model. Um, but you can actually get engine driven compressors. Uh, this at one time had an engine driven compressor over here. Uh, just a belt ran kind of compressor. Um, they're really nice because as you're driving, it'll actually build up pressure. So you can actually get up, you can get a lot bigger tanks and fill up. And then uh, at car shows, you don't have to worry so much about your electric pumps running and running out of air uh, quite as much. <clears throat> There's pros and cons to each. Uh, engine driven uses a little bit more fuel uh, because it's belt driven versus uh, alternator driven, which is, I don't know, I guess it's kind of a trade off. Um, but engine driven compressors usually run about a thousand dollars. It really depends what you get and what it's for. They can obviously be more. Um, the Viairs that I'm running, the 444Cs, I believe they're like three or four hundred dollars. I don't really remember now. Um, I like them. Uh, the difference is uh, the the Viairs, the electric the electric ones are kind of kind of loud. Um, not not terrible, but I I don't know. I'd rather have an engine driven, uh, but again, it's more money and it's more fab work, and you have to run more line. Um, but yeah, that's that's another trade off uh, that you have to decide. Do you want to do it on a cheap budget and uh, get away with the electrics? Uh, most people do use electrics, so that's I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, it's just a matter of what you're trying to do and how much room you got for air tanks and all that good stuff. Earlier I showed you guys uh, the tubular control arms. Basically tubular control arms uh, allow you to have more travel room uh, because they're actually thinner. These are only what, like an inch an inch thick, inch and a half thick uh, versus the regular control arms which are much more bulky and they can actually hit um, on your frame in here uh, if they move too much. Um, so most of the time people do replace at least the uppers. Uh, sometimes people replace the lowers. It kind of depends what size rim you want to tuck. Uh, how, much, how much tire you want on your on there? Um, the more the more drop you have, the more likely you're gonna need uh, tubular control arms, just because they take up less space. Um, so that's something you have to consider. Those are kind of expensive, uh, unless you have something like an S10 where they make a just ton of everything bolt on. Um, anything else, they can be expensive. Sometimes they have to be custom fabbed. Uh, it really depends what your application is. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me a comment or a message and I'll try and help you out.